Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Weekly Warrior Preview. I'm Donette Logan with Jerry Young. I am so glad to be back. Oh, I'm glad to have you back, Donette. That's too much work for me, okay? And then you send Marty in here. My gosh, I mean, he's great, but he's a lot of work. He had, he was planned and ready to go. I'm telling Big you. thanks to Coach Marty Smith for filling in for me while I was gone, and Peter Woods for doing our interviews. But we're back on a regular routine, but we have a special guest this week. That's right. John Lester is going to join us today, and he's our new color analyst in the booth every Friday night, and he's also in charge of ALPreps.com, which is the Bracketology, if I can say that word right, so I'm anxious to have him on today. So we'll have a little preview of the brackets as we get closer to playoffs, plus we'll talk to Jacks Van Zant and Coach Freeman, but first, a word from our sponsors. Know the science behind killing COVID-19 and other viruses? I don't either, but I do know who to trust. Wellis Air has patented technology inside their air disinfection purifier that removes 99.9% .9 of existing viruses, bacteria, allergens, molds, odor, and VOCs on surfaces and in the air. The sun's ultraviolet rays are combined with moisture in the air to create atmosphere hydroxyls to clean and protect your environment. Most people will never understand that statement, but everyone wants the air they breathe to be clean and safe. The folks at Wellis Air have patented technology that cleans the air and surfaces in your home or office. To learn more, go to myenvirosol.com. Gym Time is celebrating Thompson High School's 100-year anniversary by giving away 100 gym memberships. If you're an Alabaster City School student or employee, just go to gymtime.fitness and click on the 100 for 100 giveaway tab to register for your free one-year membership. Now is your chance to get fit at Alabaster's Premier Fitness Center. And remember, we're only giving away 100 memberships, so don't miss out. That's Gym Time's 100 for 100 giveaway. Go to gymtime.fitness and click on the 100 for 100 giveaway tab or call us at 205-624-4040. Open seven days per week with 24-hour access. What time is it? Gym time. For quality pest control service from an experienced and reliable company, Mr. Bugs offers residential and commercial pest and termite control service. Mr. Bugs Pest Patrol, 205-663-1919. Brooklier Pharmacy on Highway 119 is a full-service pharmacy that provides top quality products and hometown service at competitive prices. The Brooklier family has been in business for more than 50 years and is proud to be a part of Alabaster. Welcome back to the Weekly Warrior Preview. And Jerry, the score was a little different than what I expected last Friday. Yeah, 41-7. to 7. I mean, we had full control of the game all the way up. We let them get a free touchdown right there at the end, which is no big deal. But yeah... You know, Gaston City had good athletes, mm -hmm. but we uh, had better athletes and we won the game. We did. We had a few mistakes, though, that are going to need to be corrected before we head, well, say home, but Oak Mountain comes to see us. That's right. You know, and a little mistakes on both sides of the ball, let's right. face it. But defense playing lights out as they have all year. And, of course, the guy on the field that you got a chance to talk to kind of runs those linebackers, and that's Jax Van Zandt. Here's what Jax had to say about playing for Thompson his senior year. Jax Van Zant joins us now, and Jax, we appreciate you stopping time after practice to talk to us. You know, this week, you guys, if you're the last regular season home game, but you're facing Oak Mountain. And I know when the season started, I didn't expect Oak Mountain to be the team they are. When you're facing a team that was kind of like an underdog, and you've seen them come into your home field, are you changing game plans, or how are you guys approaching that week? Uh, we try to uh, treat it like every other game. Uh, we, we always uh, knew Oak Mountain was good. We've played against a lot of those kids since we were little. Uh, Evan Smith, their quarterback, he, he's really good. So we've played against him since we were little. Um, but the, the game plan doesn't change. We always just try to keep it consistent, you know, keep the same routine, stuff like that. You mentioned playing against them since you were little, some of those guys you played with and against. And most of the guys on your team, you've all played together since you were six, seven years old. Yes, ma'am. And that bond is showing on the field. Do you think that's contributing to how strong you guys are defensively and offensively? Absolutely. Me, Jeremiah, Nate, all, all those guys have played 
uh, you know, since we were little. And, and, I mean, we knew Peter. We always played middle school ball with him too. So it definitely contributes a lot to how we play on the field. I think just the team chemistry and especially the defensive chemistry is just, you know, all the way there this year. So it definitely contributes. I've seen you guys defensively bond away from the field, have your team dinners and kind of things together at your coach's house. How important is that for you guys as a unit? It's really important. It uh, it can always get better, the team chemistry. So when you go out and do those things with your uh, – your teammates it's not just you know doing it with your teammates it's doing it with your, your friends that you're going to be friends with for a long time so it, it definitely is something important and I, I enjoy doing it a lot and you know I, I'm gonna look forward to doing it you know when we're all out of football and you know hanging out with those guys. So. You're a senior now we talked earlier on the show about how Thompson in 2014 they're like number eight or like no one expected them to be where they are now so you've seen this program grow and develop and now you're going to be leaving going to the next level what are you hoping the next class continues for you guys? Uh, absolutely no drop off. We we expect it to be you know the same as is when we were here, and the, just like the seniors last year, they expected it to be the same as when they were here. So we expect no drop off because we we know how those young guys can play, and they're getting a lot of valuable reps this year because you know we've been winning some pretty big in some of these games. So we expect there to be no drop off because these some of these young guys are playing you know varsity football against you know other team starters. So. That's right. You know, we've seen like your second and third string guys coming mm -hmm. in. We're kind of like kind of look at the roster, and be like, who's this person? Yeah. But there's a lot of talent. It shows how just how talented this team is, and how people want to play at Thompson. Now you got you already committed. Yes, ma'am. For those who don't know, what's next for you? Uh, I'm gonna go to North Texas, and yeah, I'm gonna play football there. So. Wait, I can't wait to watch you. Yes, I've never watched North Texas play. I'll be honest with you, but I think now I'm gonna have a reason to watch. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for being here. No part. problem. Thank you. Jerry, you know, I said it before, I've become really attached to this class because they were freshmen when we started the show. I'm telling you. And it's just, it's almost bittersweet to see them leave. Yeah, it's just ripping our hearts out, kind of. You know, I mean, I know these kids, and you're right, we've been with them now for four years. We said goodbye to senior classes before, but this one, as the season gets toward the end, it's going to be harder and harder. I may cry on the field that last game. I'm just going to be honest right, let's with Let's just you. change subjects, okay? <laughs> let's change subjects. So I have to tell you, my son made the freshman basketball team at Thompson, so yeah. I'm going to be a little favoritism towards basketball more this season. Okay. But I want everybody to come out on Tuesday, October 26th, to Thompson Arena for Hoop Fest. If you've not seen this event, it is amazing. The players and the coaches dress up. Your kids can come in costumes. They go trick-or-treating around the arena. It is a lot of fun, and you don't want to miss it. Well, I may show up dressed up as a sports announcer. How about that? I think that's perfect. Okay, we'll take a break. John Lester is going to join us right after this. Looking for amazing family dentistry in Alabaster? Doctors Albritton and Artavino strive to stay up to date on the latest techniques in dentistry and materials to help provide the best treatment available. From cleanings to same day crowns and even whitening, Albritton and Artavino Family Dentistry is here to serve all your dental needs. Now we all know, Tim, you sell real estate, but you also do a lot in the community. Talk to us about your community support program. Hey, any teacher, school, coach, or sports team out there that needs a sponsor, we're here to help invest and put it back into our community. So make sure you give us a call if we can help your team, your teacher, or your school. So go Warriors. Shelby Fence Company is a local family-owned business serving Shelby County and surrounding areas since 1989. You can count on our team of highly experienced installers to give you quality products, expert installation, and friendly customer service. For your next fence project, remember Shelby Fence Company in Alabaster. Welcome back to the Weekly Warrior Preview. And normally you see the three of us or hear the three of us on Friday nights. John Lunsford joins us now. And John, we wanted to have you on because we are three weeks of the regular season left. And it's time to kind of look ahead to those semifinals. It in is. The in the brackets. It, this is a complicated time of year for me, trying to figure out everything. It's a little easier in 7A than the other uh, six classifications. But this is fun to me. It's fun to see where everybody's going to go, who they could potentially play, and travel all across the state to do so. It's fun to you, but I was going to get a headache listening to you and Jerry going, where are we going? Well, listen, <laughs> don't listen to me because I just follow his lead. This stuff is its very complicated, but right now we know we went out, John. We're home field advantage for the playoffs. So it's real simple. When you do win, you're the top seed. Obviously, the, the higher seeds will have more of an advantage. But in the state of Alabama, it actually 
uh, changes the deeper you go in the playoffs. Now, 1A through 6A is different because you have 32 teams as opposed to 16 teams. But with 7A, if Thompson wins out, then they're the region champ, and that's, you know, become standard around here. But Thompson right now, the way it's looking, could have a rematch against Spartan, a team we saw early on in the season in that first home game. Then they would be at home until potentially the semifinals. It switches around. The state tries to make it fair, and I understand why, even though Thompson is one of the top five teams in the country. It's, once, they, once they get to the semifinals, if James Clements, who is probably going to win Region 4, wins out, still have, might have to travel to Huntsville. So that's why I like to kind of project this out and say, hey, is there a chance we all have to go from Alabaster to Huntsville? There is a chance of that. Well, let's focus on 7A. Let's start with Region 3. And how are our teams looking in this region? We know it's the toughest region in this in 7A. What are we looking like? Yeah, so Thompson Hoover are the top two teams. Big shock, I know, right? Everybody's expecting <laughs> Didn't see that, one coming. that, big, that last uh, game between Thompson and Hoover. But Oak Mountain is a team that has been really, really solid. And I know uh, y'all have talked about it. And, and, you know, we've seen Oak Mountain in the playoffs a lot before. Let's go back to 2014, the very first year of Class 7A. Anybody know who the uh, number two team was in Region 3? Hoover was number one. Anybody know who number two was? Oak Mountain. That would be Oak Mountain. You know who number three was? Mm, here at Trustful. Tuscaloosa County, if you can believe it. I'm you, done. <laughs> <laughs> you know who number eight was? No. Probably Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. Wow. This was number eight. So, uh, you know, the, the past few years, Mark Freeman's done a great job because obviously yes. it's flipped. Tuscaloosa County's at the bottom now. Thompson's up at the top. Obviously Hoover's there. But, but Oak Mountain and Hewitt Trustful, those are the two teams in third and fourth right now. Hewitt and Gadsden City actually play – to determine that 4C, believe it or not. And I know we've seen both of them now, but Gaston City has a chance to be that fourth team. But Oak Mountain's probably going to be three, depending on what happens this week against Thompson. So it's looking like Thompson, Hoover, Oak Mountain, Hewitt, Trustville, maybe Gaston City can sneak in there. Big change from what we've seen in the past. Region 4, because that's who we could be facing. Yeah, Region 4, James Clemens, they have been uh, the top team up there for a while now. They've made a little bit of a run in the playoffs, but still fall to uh, either Hoover or Thompson. But James Clemens right now, number one, Bob Jones, their Madison counterpart. Number two, Kelvis White, the head coach up there. Actually, my coach in high school and college. Um, so I've always followed him. He's done a really good job up there with the Patriots. Florence is number three. Spartman's number four. Huntsville's number five. Spartman and Huntsville have to play. Um, Spartman, we've seen them. It was a 55 nothing blowout to begin the season. But Huntsville's a team that got blown out by Spain Park. And they're actually on the cusp of potentially making the playoffs, and we've seen Spain Park this year. So I, w I want to say that's their only win this season I is against so. Huntsville. So um, there's a chance Huntsville could be that team that Thompson sees in the playoffs in the first round. Regardless, we know kind of the caliber of team that could potentially slip in there in that fourth spot. But it looks like James Clemens, Bob Jones, Florence Spartan as it's playing out now. Where do you want to head next? I'll let let's, you decide on this one. Well, let's go to we'll, – we'll, say, we'll save the uh, best for last when it comes to who you could potentially play in the Super 7, okay. and that's Region 2. Region 1 is a train wreck. Jerry and I talk about it on our podcast all the time. We talk about is a team like Foley going to come back. Remember Julio Jones, obviously, uh, probably the biggest name to come out of there. But Fairhope got a win over Theodore last week, so Fairhope's the number one team down there. I've actually played down at Fairhope when I was in school. It's a great place to go down there and play. It's a long trip. Don't they have to go got down a to cannon, Fairhope. don't they? They, got they, a do. they do Just have the like cannon. Tuscaloosa County, and it catches everybody uh, by surprise. Oh, that's scary. Yes, that's they death. do. That's right. scary. It's all to death in Tuscaloosa <laughs> County. Uh, but Fairhope's the top team right now. They beat Theodore, looking like they're going to win, but still, that's a nine-team region, so they got to play one more region game than all the other regions do. Theodore, um, they're five and one. Baker, they're in the third spot. They're four and one. Could potentially work into a second seed in Daphne. They're uh, the fourth seed at four and two. Foley still alive technically, but they have a lot of work to do to work. Foley away. won last week by running two kickoffs back of 99 yards for a touchdown. Otherwise, they would have lost and been out of it. Yeah. I was a little surprised to see how Sarah season went though. You know, and kind of going down that south area, Spanish Fort Sarah Land. I was like, oh. You know, I wasn't expecting Fairhope and everybody else to kind of be doing as well as they are. But yeah, that's 6A Region 1, 7A Region 1. They trade teams a lot. They do. And that's so you, the thing. They always Daphne's a team teams. that was so good in 6A. They moved up to 7A. They're going to uh, likely make the playoffs yeah. now. Uh, McGill Tulin, I mean, that's they made, a, what, three uh, straight trips as well right. to the Super 7. They were kind of the first team to do that run before Thompson did it and played Spain Park and Hoover and, you know, I think got one championship out of that. But they dropped down to 6A, so it's all over the place. That whole area is constantly moving up and down. It's always confusing. It is. Uh, and, then, and then Region 2, the only team that's actually locked in right now is Central Phoenix City. It's not a shock to me. I know Auburn was a team Thompson played last year, but it was Central for the two years before that. Central Phoenix City head coach is Patrick Nix, who his son Caleb now is the quarterback there. And i, I got to be honest, I really like the way Caleb plays when they were at Pinson and Caleb was an eighth grader or a freshman playing behind Bo there. Watching him in warm-ups, uh, we were down there for the Super 7. I think it was the first year Thompson went and he can sling the ball. So he's a really good quarterback down there. Central Phoenix City, always really solid. A lot of great players. Peter Parrish, quarterback, um, they're the first time when they beat Thompson. And uh, Justin Rawls, so many great players have come from Central. So they're the one seed. I think they're 
the favorite from the South. I think they're a much easier favorite to move on to the Super 7, even than the North, just because you do have teams like Hoover and O'Mountain mm-hmm. who have played a lot better. Um, Auburn, number two. Prattville, number three. We talk about it on our podcast all the time. Prattville trying to make a little bit of a run, but not quite doing it. Um, Enterprise, number four. Jeff Davis and Dothan still alive, but they got a lot of work to do. So if I had to just, you know, pull my Thompson hat off and back up and say who's it going to be, I'd lean Thompson Central Phoenix City. But still a lot of football left to play. Still a lot to go. Three weeks left regular season. A lot can change. And you always have those sleeper teams. Oh, yeah. So you never know who's going to knock somebody out. I'm telling you, Oak Mountain is a team to watch. I know it's been a lot of easy wins for Thompson so far this season, but Oak Mountain has done a phenomenal job. And like I said, they were a two seed, then they dropped kind of out of the picture. They're back. Mountain Brook's gone. Gaston City's not a stronger team. Oak Mountain, they're right there behind Thompson and Hoover. They have a strong quarterback. They do. It's it's Their kind of uh, offense slows the game down, and that's the kind of offense that can – Win you games. Hoover was 28-21. That's their only loss of the season. Hoover's a team that can put a lot of points on the board, just like Thompson is. I mean, we know how good Hoover and Thompson are. Oak Mountain's the kind of team that can play spoiler in that scenario. They can. They kind of throw your defense off a little bit. And I think we were all on the sidelines. I was with the coaches, and we were what, hearing the scores for that game. I kept texting you guys, what's the score, what's the score? We were really surprised to see Oak Mountain and Hoover being so close. Yeah, and, and Hewitt Trustful struggling against Vestavia. That makes me think Oak Mountain could definitely beat Hewitt and be that third seed. And as Tyler Crane starts kind of building over the years, Oak Mountain can find themselves right in that conversation with Hoover and Thompson. So, John, let me ask you about our defense. I know that, you know, everybody talks about it. Obviously, we scored more points on defense than we've allowed. I noticed that stat came from the NFHS network, which was interesting to me. But we got some stars over there on defense. Do you think our defense handles Oak Mountain and Hoover's offense by just sheerly matching up? Yeah, so when you play these kind of teams and Hoover – um, has been obviously a top dog for a long, long time mm-hmm. from the Rush Pro days up until now. But Oak Mountain has kind of been back and forth, but that style of offense is so different. Look at a team like Georgia Tech. Whenever you play a team like Georgia Tech back in the day, you would struggle. Look at Alabama when they played like Georgia Southern. They struggle because it's a different type, type of offense than the same old, same old thing you see every day. But Thompson's defense is so disciplined that no matter what, they're going to be able to stay home. They're going to be able to stay on their assignments, play fundamentally sound football. And everybody I talk to instantly goes to Jeremiah Alexander, and understandably so. He's that number one guy. He's going to Alabama. Everybody has so many more guys on that side. I know, and I say, look, Jeremiah's great. Don't get me wrong, but let me you know, name off all these different players. And I, and I start with Peter Woods. Let's go on the other side of that you know, line. You have Jeremiah coming off one side. Well, a lot of people avoid him. That's let a player like Peter Woods step up and be in the spotlight. It also helps he got an interception off a referee's kick to put him in the national spotlight. But right. there's so much talent on that defense. Let's go with the secondary. Everybody knows Trevor Hardy for the kick he made last year. Let's watch him as a defensive back. Uh, Jax Van Zant, you know, who you all talk to. There's so much talent there that I could pretty much name every single player and, and say Tony, this is a special kid. Tony Mitchell last week, 90-yard pick six. So, you know, it's talent everywhere. You know, Those defensive points have to come from somewhere. It's not just like one person's getting a pick and scoring. One person's getting a scoop and score and scoring. It's the whole defense. It's a whole team effort. And they're just team tackling, getting turnovers, doing everything they can. It's gonna. I think this Friday night will be a good game to watch. we got a lot of exciting things coming up in the next three weeks. And I'm sure we will have you back on as we get closer to the playoffs. John, thank you so much for joining us. Jerry, you're going to have Coach Freeman next? I'll have Coach Freeman next when we come back. Serenity Salon and Spa in Helena offers hair services for men and women, facials, makeup application, and waxing. Book an appointment at serenity-salonandspa.com or call 205-624-2030. Visit them at 123 8th Place in Helena. Showcase your personal style at LJ's Retail Therapy. Shop their selection of clothing, shoes, gifts, and accessories in-store and online. Visit them on Highway 119, seven days a week in Alabaster, beside Publix, or at ljsretailtherapy.com. Mainline Heating and Air Conditioning has been providing quality products since 1989. They love giving back to the community and they service all of the greater Birmingham area. Call them today or go to MainlineHeating.com. Drone Tech specializes in drone models, customization, training and maintenance with the industry leading drone deploy software to provide professional quality results. For more details, visit Michael Golden and the team at drone-tech.net or call 205-895-5099 and give them a follow on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome back into the Weekly Warrior Preview 1. I'm joined now by head coach 
of the Thompson Warriors, Coach Mark Freeman. Coach, be honest. Now, you know it's interview day. You you wear the better threads on interview day, don't you? I just wear the first thing that I got laid out the night before. So, <laughs> I, I forget that it's Tuesday, but I am what I am, and i right. blessed to be here. Good win last week, another region win. Oak Mountain coming in. You talked all year about a target on our back. This is one of those that you circle in red. It's a giant target. It, you know, it, it is, I guess. It's, it, I mean, this it's, it's the next Friday night, and um, their record's good this year, and, and uh, they'll come in here wanting to beat us, just like the team that we played last Friday night wanted to beat us. And um, we all just saw last weekend what happens when you don't prepare right and you have some – some things that might distract you from pricing good and going to the game and playing that day good. And, and we just have to keep pricing. We've had two really good days, keep pricing well and uh, retain. And, and when we wake up Friday, be ready to play football. Oak Mountain's offense, completely different from last year. Coach Chris Hill moved on. You got a new coach there, new offense. We had to prepare a little different this year than we did last year, very similar to the way we prepared for Vestavia. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's changed the way they line up, but they don't change. They want to run that quarterback. Um, got a really good quarterback, and they're going to find every way possible to run that quarterback. So, you know, it's like I've told our guys, if, if we, we do a good job against the quarterback, you know, they might throw some passes on us. And But at the end of the day, just like last year, they want Evan to have football. And I don't blame him. He's a great, great player. Um, but we, we have to find a way to stop that quarterback this week, and that's the key is to, to – contain him and not let him beat us and our DBs play really good and then key the runs and, and, and I think we'll be okay. We as viewers get kind of used to seeing the special teams make the plays, always a good kickoff, always a good extra point, that sort of thing. Talk a little bit about special teams and how they important they are, especially going into this time of year. Well, as you saw last year, we executed, I think, three phases of the kicking game perfect. Uh, we blocked the punt, scoop and score, onside kick, and made the field goal. So uh, we spent a lot of time each week on special teams. It's most it's a critical part of the game, and I think I do Coach Jones and do a great job with that. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry, you know, it's going to be interesting because I know Oak Mountain's coach, Tyler Crane, is one of the youngest coaches in 7A. Yeah. Coach Freeman, one of the more seasoned coaches. Seeing those two go head-to-head, -head, it's going to be a good game. I think better than what we expected. I think so, too. And, you know, Oak Mountain, Tyler Crane, he's 6-1. I mean, he came on in and took that program over from Chris Bell. Usually say, well, Chris left you a lot. And he left a lot. He did. But this is Tyler's team, and I tell you what, I'm very impressed so far. And I think there's probably going to be like a little bit of rival bitterness going because of his former Central Phoenix days. I think so too. By the way, if you want to see it, you can go to warriornationnetwork.org. You can watch the game there or listen to it. Donette will be on the sideline. John Lester will be up in the booth with me and I'll bring you the play-by-play. -play. So warriornationnetwork.org to watch or listen. And don't forget to go to Warrior Nation, I'm sorry, Thompson Warriors website to get your tailgate tickets and join us for our pregame show at 6 just outside the stadium gates. Grab some dinner from Chuck Fathers. A lot of fun for our last home game of the regular season. We'll see you Friday night at 7 at Warrior Stadium.